Today we're going to go ahead and continue with activity 1.4 code tracing. We're going to go ahead and look at a new program called the Hornets. Now the Hornets is going to be a little bit different than the previous activities that we've already done in that it's going to use variables. Now variables are basically a placeholder. We can store information within those variables, whether that be any type of letters, which are known as strings, numbers, or even Boolean logic, such as true and false. So we're going to be looking at not only code tracing and finding the bugs in the program, but also needing to code trace those variables along the way. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at my documents where you are going to find your Hornets code tracing chart. Now, remember, we do need to figure out what the objective and the bugs are for these programs. Once we go ahead and open that code tracing chart, the next step is to take our Hornets hex file and import that into MakeCode. So we can go ahead and click on our make code link and that's going to open up our make code environment and from here we're going to need to go ahead and import that file in now you can find that hex file at the bottom of your schoology page just simply go ahead and click on download and once you download that file it's going to be placed into your files manager once it's in your files manager we can go back to make code and from here we're going to go ahead and click on that import button select import file choose your file and then go ahead and click on your recent documents to find it. You should see a file that says A1 underscore four Hornets option. Select that file and go ahead and click open. From here, we need to go ahead and select go ahead and our file will be imported into MakeCode. Now, just as before, before we start to play around or manipulate any part of the code, we need to just go ahead and observe what is actually going on. We are using an on A button press, which means nothing should be triggered until we hit that A button. So just looking at the code, we can see that when the on A button is pressed, we're gonna clear the screen. So anything that's on the screen should be wiped away. Here we have this variable called set X. So remember, a variable is simply a placeholder. So there's nothing there unless we set the variable to a specific term. In this case, we're taking the variable X and applying a pick random number zero to four. So in this case, X can equal anything from zero, one, two, three, or four. Now that we have our variable set, it's time to look at our if, else if, and else conditions. So when looking at conditions, if statements take priority, it's the first statement that's always going to be run in a program. So in this case, we're going to first run our if, which is saying if x is equal to five. So remember, we're picking a random number. So x can be zero, one, two, three, or four. My if statement is saying x is equal to five. Well, if x is equal to five, then we're gonna show the number five. My else if looks like it's setting x to equal four and show four. Next, my else if would say x is equal to three, show the number three. My next else if, x is equal to two, show the number two. And the last else if is x equals one, show the number one. My else statement will only be run if the if or else if statements are not true. So if neither of those conditions are met, then we would show the show number six. Now here you can kind of see that if we're picking a random number of zero to four, and we're still trying multiple options such as five and six, there's probably gonna be some sort of bug in the program. So if we go and test this by hitting A, we should see a number show on that LED screen. In this case, we've seen the number four. So the else if statement of X equals four, show the number four, must have been my true statement. If I select that again, we got the number four again. If we click it one more time, now we're getting the number two. And if we cycle through this a couple times, we're probably going to notice that there's going to be a couple different images that don't show up. So let's take a closer look at our objective and see if we can actually isolate the bugs. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is take a look at my comment for my event handler on a button press. So by clicking on that comment button, here we have my objective which basically states that the program rolls a digital die to randomly select a number between one and six. Pressing the A button starts the roll. So we're trying to get the numbers one through six to appear on the microbit LED screen. So I'm gonna take my objective here, 
and I'm going to simply copy that into my code tracing chart objective. So now I know what my objective is. Program rolls that digital die. We randomly select the number between one and six by pressing the A button. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens. We already know that pressing the A button is going to start the roll. So that should be my outcome when it comes for my on A button press. When we press the A button, it did actually start the roll. So again, if I hit the A button, we do get a random number. So my on A button event handler is working. So my correct for this would be yes. Now that I have my yes statement, let's go ahead and take a look at the clear screen. Now this can be a little tricky, but we're gonna still go ahead and take a look at that comment. This clears the screen before each roll. And when we hit that A button, we do see the number one appear. And if we hit it again, we do see a new number, which means that number one had to have been cleared at some point. Now it's happening a little bit fast and it's hard to see, but we can go into that little debugger window. So remember if we click on that little bug below, we can go up and check the snail mode and that's gonna slow our program down for us. So if I hit the A button, it's gonna go through, set that random number, show the number two. Now when I hit the A button again, what you're gonna notice over here on my actual program is that it's going to go ahead and show the A button being pressed, clears the screen, and then it's going to set a new random number. So when we slow it down through the debugger window, you can see that it's being cleared and then a new number appears. So we do know that the clear button is actually working. So remember that that clear button clears the screen and the answer to that would be yes. Now we get to the variable. So let's go and take a look with the comments for my variable state. And in this case, it's stating that we are going to set the value of X to a random number between zero and five. So here we can go ahead and copy that. And if we look at our actual variable, we're setting the value of X to pick a random number between zero and four. So this is telling me to be, set a random number between zero and five, but my code is actually saying zero and four. So in my code tracing chart, we know that that's one of the bugs. So we're gonna go ahead and select no for that option, and we're gonna identify that bug down below. So value of X is set to random number between zero and four instead of zero to five. So remember, we're just identifying what that bug actually is, and we did that by labeling that on my code tracing chart. But now that we have that bug listed, let's go ahead and change that value from a four to a five. So now we really have six options here. One could equal one, two equals two, three equals three, four equals four, five equals five. But we have to figure out what happens when we roll that six and that will happen later on in the program. Now that we've corrected that variable, we can go ahead and check for my if statement, we're gonna show the number five on the LED grid. And let's go and check the rest of them while we're here. My else if shows the number four, my three shows the number three, my two shows the number two, and my one should show the number one. So we're gonna go ahead and just simply copy that if x equals five when rolled show the number five. To save a little time, we're just gonna go ahead and type that in for all of them. And then we can go ahead and just simply modify each one. So this one should be your four, shows the number four. This one's gonna be your three. And then we have our two and our two as well. And the last one we need to change is that one. So before we go ahead and say whether or not it actually works, what we need to go ahead and do is just test it out to make sure we see all of those numbers. So again, if we hit the A button, I saw the number six, not one of the ones we're looking for right now. Okay. There's the number two. So we know that the number two actually works. So we can go ahead and type in yes. We know two works. If we hit it again, there's number one. So let's go back and for number one, we can put yes, 
Now we got a two again. There's your three. There's a five. So now we have three working. We have five working. Let's see if we can get a number four to show up here. And it's probably gonna take us a couple clicks to kind of get through this. And there we have our number four show up. So now we know we have four showing up as well. So now we have our if statements are correct. My else if statements are correct. Now, what about the else? Well, remember we can roll this digital die and this digital die can really represent anything from zero to five. So if we roll the number five, we see the number five, we roll four, we see the four, three, a three, two, a two, one, a one. But what happens if we randomly roll a zero? Well, in this case, if we roll a zero, my if statement would be incorrect. My else ifs would all be incorrect, which means the only other thing that could be run is this else statement. So because all of those statements are incorrect or false, as Boolean logic would state, we would now see the show number six. So here, if we look at my comment, it's gonna tell me if X does not equal one, two, three, four, five when rolled, then we show the number six. So if we go ahead and plug that guy in there, if we go ahead and click on my micro bit, we should eventually see the number six appear. And there you go. Couple clicks, we've now seen the six, and now we are able to go ahead and say, yes, that does work. So we only really had one bug in this program, and that was that we were setting the value of X to be a random number of zero to four instead of zero to five. The last step for my code tracing chart is to go and correct the program and add the correct screenshot. So we're gonna go ahead and collapse all of those little comments there. And from there, we can go ahead and right click into the window and select snapshot. Once you select snapshot, remember on your Chromebook down the bottom right hand corner, you'll see where it says copy to clipboard. Just cut, click on copy to clipboard and then you can go ahead and paste that image in. So here you can see the only bug we fixed was that set X from pick random zero to four was setting our value of X to picky random zero to five. You've now created or fixed your first buggy program with a variable.